Oh God, help us, God. See, it's a lot of times that we may not even understand stuff that be going on in our lives. It's a lot of times that we may not even know how to accept some things that's going on in our lives. There's a lot of times that we may not even, and we can't even figure out really why stuff is going on and why it's been going on and, and when is it ever going to stop because this thing is always just repetitive. This thing is always just just coming. It's coming. It's coming. And, 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 and in the midst of it coming, it seems like it's like a flood. And, and we drown in and we cannot even get out of it. So, the Lord was ministering to me today about and showing me the tongues and the mouths and all that stuff for the people. It's a lot of times that, listen to me, the Bible says, any and everything in our paraphrase in our lives can be tamed except our tongue. A lot of times people don't even know or even have a clue that the enemy is using them and got them doing and saying a certain other thing. I want to go to the book, you guys. I, I want to go to the book right quick. Whew. Jesus. Okay. I want to go to the book. Because I know y'all have heard people say stuff about haters and all that. We got the wrong impression and the wrong description about haters. So I'm explaining that to y'all today. I'm explaining that to y'all today. The, <laughs> the title of this sermon is Curses from the Haters and Blessings from God. Listen. We really be trying to figure out why people the way they are and why they act the way that they do towards us. We really be trying to figure out what in the world did we do? How did we do it? Or why this person act like this all the time? Or why this happens all the time? So this morning, we're gonna go to the book of Romans. We're going to start at Romans. And before we start reading, we're going to go to Romans. We're going to start at chapter 14. Let's do Romans chapter 14. See, first, you got to understand the different types of haters. Okay? And what do hate come from? And where do it stand? It's four different types of haters, y'all. <laughs> for real, for real. A person can hate you for a million different reasons. Reasons and types is two different things. So it's four different types of haters. You got them haters that always try to find fault in everything that you do. And they want to criticize everything that you do. I don't care whether it's natural or whether it's spiritual. They always want to find fault in you. They always want to look and see, oh, they ain't doing that like that. Or they shouldn't be doing that like that. Oh, and they, did you see that? Or, or did you see this? It's all that we talking about the first kind of hater. The one that's looking for fault and the one that always want to criticize all the time. It don't matter what you do. You ain't never doing nothing right or they think you should be doing it the way they want you to do it. How about you doing something wrong and they talking about that too? It, it just don't matter. They looking for some kind of fault in your right or even in your wrong, they looking for some kind of fault. And then there's that hater that always got something to say and they ain't trying to help you. And they purposely try to pull you down and make you feel like you're doing something wrong. Okay? Okay, that's two. 
<clears throat> when a person don't want to help you and they purposely trying to pull you down because some people can come to you and tell you some things concerning you or even a situation and they trying to help you. Then some people gonna come to you and try to tell you things about you and yourself or any situation and they really want to hurt you. So I want y'all to understand that's the second kind of hater. So the third kind of hater is the one that's always trying to make you look bad in front of your body. They, they always trying to make you look bad or point their finger at you and, and so that, you know, all attention be on them. Those are attention seekers. You, so they got, they always trying to make you look bad in front of somebody. And then, <laughs> The biggest hater of them all is the ones that talk about you behind your back. Listen to me. They talk about you behind your back. And then they try to destroy your character or slander your name. Four different types of haters. So why do they hate like that? Why do they why do people hate like that? We say it's haters. That's what we call it. But it's another word from it, from the old school. I'm gonna give y'all that word in a minute. So let me tell you why they hate. Some people hate because you have something and they don't. Anyone. Other people hate because they want to put you down so that they can feel good about themselves. And then there's people who want to center attention. Then there's the haters who have lost sight in them own selves and what they got because they're so concentrating on those stuff. Or you. Or what? And it causes bitterness. So a hater is what we call it today. Then it was just called simply one word, jealousy. Jealousy turns into envy. And envy turns into hate. Then you wonder why people hate you. When they can love you one day, to death, they say. Oh, they got a new word to life. And then the next day, they hate you. Y'all remember that song? Everybody ain't been saved all their life. Y'all remember that song? <laughs> it's a thin line between love and hate. That's true. So let's go to Romans. Chapter 14. And all these scriptures that I'm going to give y'all, it's all wound up. And, and y'all gonna understand what I'm saying. Start at verse 10. I, I want you to start at verse 10. You got the regular Bible. I'm gonna get you a Bible. I'm gonna get you a King James. I am. Okay. So we're gonna start at verse 10. Chapter 14. Read. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Why are you always talking about me? Read. But why dost thou say it not thy brother? Why? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat. Of you Christ. so worried about what I'm doing and how I'm saying it, or if I'm doing something wrong, and if I'm doing something right. What about is you worrying about your own self? How about you help me pray? Because guess what? While you trying to correct me here, we all got to stand before God. So guess what? I don't owe you no explanation. I don't have to tell you what I'm doing or how I'm doing it or when I'm doing it. I don't have to, I don't have to tell you or give you no reason for my actions. I, I don't have to um, defend myself. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm, I'm, I'm all in the whole message now. I, I ain't got to do none of that stuff. Read. 
For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every, and every tongue. Why are we sitting up here God. worrying about what what we, him, her, they, we, and us, all of us doing? We all gonna have to bow down to God. Read. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself. To we God. gotta give account of our own stuff. Stop trying to prove something to somebody. That you are oh so good, or, or you doing something oh so right, or that wasn't me, it was them. Come on, read. Let us not therefore judge one another. Let's not judge. stop. Why we always got to judge one another? Oh, I ain't judging. Let me tell you what the culture used to always say. I was raised up in the Church of God in Christ, y'all. And y'all know they real strict. And so this is what they used to say. I ain't judging nobody. This was a justification for they judging people. I ain't judging nobody. I'm just a fruit inspector. Because the Bible say you are judging by the fruit that they bear, right? They say, I ain't, I ain't judging nobody. I'm just a fruit inspector. You ain't inspecting nail one of your fruits and they, you got a rotten one down at the bottom that's going to mess up the whole thing. You, read but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's life. That's it. That's the scripture I wanted to get to. The Bible says that we don't supposed to put no stumbling block before our sisters our brothers that they may fall. So why in the world am I trying to say something about you behind your back because I'm trying to put something in front of you for to try to hinder you. Why am I trying to say this or say that or in secret or, or even to your face? See, because some of us got a whole lot of nerve. Some of us got a whole lot of nerve. So we're going to say something about somebody because they doing a certain thing or they ain't doing a certain thing. And so I'm going to put something in front of you that's going to stop you from being able to get past. Why am I going to do that? Why am I? Why am I got something to say about you? I got something to say about you. Oh, did you see them? Oh, they said so. so God already know what they're doing and how they're doing. They even know what they're doing and how they're doing. For the Bible says even a child knows when they're doing right from wrong. That's what the book said. Not me. I ain't going to make this stuff up. So why are we so head up on trying to put a stumbling block before our sister or our brother? And it ain't even got, let me tell you something. It ain't nothing that a person can do or say to you. If God can bless you, can't no man curse you. And I ain't talking about profanity. I, listen, the Bible says that we ought to not put a stumbling block in front of our sister or our brother. And even in the midst of us helping one another and doing stuff for one another, or one person may see you doing one thing or that, and they may not even understand. The Bible says that we are not supposed to let go. Read verse 16. Get ahead of us. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. So y'all want to understand that scripture? Okay, let's go all the way back to Romans 12. Come on. Romans 12. Because I want y'all to understand these scriptures. Because they give us scriptures and we think that we know. Oh, don't let your good be evil spoken of. It's because somebody going to talk about you. No. Because they always going to talk about you. Whether you're doing good or whether you're doing bad. They always going to have something to say. It does not matter what it is. Especially if it, things ain't doing the way that they think that they should do. Or how it go the way that they think that it should go. It don't matter. It don't give a rat's tail who or what it is. From anybody. I don't care who it is. Romans 12. I want you to read verses 17 through 21. Read it. Recompense to no man evil for evil. This is what it's talking about. Honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you. The Bible says recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide all things that is honest in the sight of God. So it don't matter if that person is speaking evil or your good. It don't matter what they say or how they say it or when they say it. You just keep being honest. You just keep speaking the truth. You just keep doing what God tell you to do. You just keep living the way you're supposed to live. It don't matter. Let them do all it. Look, the Bible says you can even get mad just on sin. You, you can even get mad just on sin. And pray for them. Keep reading. 
Dearly beloved, if go to the scripture sin, after. I think that's eighteen, baby. Read that. You want me to read eighteen? Yeah, eighteen. If it be possible, as much as life in you live. The Bible said we're supposed to be at peace with our men. Keep reading. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give You only don't worry rest. about what they saying. Don't worry about what they doing. Read. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Have we got it in our heart that even if a very person have did us so bad or did us so wrong, that we can really love them with everything in our heart? That we can really pray for them? That we can really be, be let them be hungry. You gonna feed them? Let read. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt be you cold, cold, cold fire, fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, Don't. but overcome evil with good. Let me tell you something. I dare you to be nice to a person who being mean to you. The Bible says, a soft answer turns away wrath. Right. So why somebody hollering and screaming and, and fussing and cussing and doing all that, be like, what you say, baby? You told me too loud, I, I can't understand you. I hear you, but I can't understand you. you. See, sometimes you really have to turn the other cheek. If somebody hits you, you're going to hit them back. For real, it could be a kid. If that kid <laughs> hits you, you going to hit them back. Because their mama should have taught them better. Ain't it, itty bitty? It's, <laughs> Why I just saw that? I I just saw you hitting the kid back because the kid hit you. Listen to me when I sit up here and tell you. It does not matter what a person do, how a person do it, what a person say, or how a person say it. You you understand what I'm saying? Because they cannot bless, they cannot curse what God has already blessed. It does not matter. See, what it is is our attitude against certain stuff. When somebody come up against us, it gives us a certain attitude. We fall right into that mode. If somebody doing something good for us, we, we turn into an attitude in a certain mode. It, see, it's our attitudes, y'all. It's our attitudes and the way that we address stuff and the way that we approach stuff. I mean, something could be said to you or something could be done to you or whatever. And, and when, when you approach with a certain thing, it triggers a certain attitude. It makes us, get to, it, it, it makes us be some type of way. Whether it's good or bad. If somebody approach you with a gift, you got an attitude of happy. If somebody approach you with some hearsay, you got an attitude of mad. If somebody approach you with, it's our attitudes that causes our emotions to trigger our actions. Ooh, Jesus. Our attitude causes our emotions to trigger our actions. So we pray, Lord, give us the, give us the fruits of the spirit, God. That we'll be able to handle this. We'll be able to go through this. So let's go to Matthews. I'm finna help y'all about these attitudes. I'm finna help y'all with these attitudes. We finna get all the way down to the the root of it. This I'm, I'm finna help y'all with these attitudes, and I'm gonna give y'all some examples because our attitudes can cause all kind of stuff to happen, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Matthews chapter 5. Come on, let's do these B attitudes. The B attitude. <laughs> with, with, see, because can't nobody curse what God is blessed if you watch your attitude. How can, how can that be? Because the Bible says so. I'm going to read it and I'm going to tell y'all. Come on. Let's start. Is it, it's a three? That's the first beatitude. Yep. Verse three. And I want you to go one verse at a time because after each verse, I got something to say. Okay. Three. Read. 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. So you always feeling down. You you always feeling some type of way. You you always in a in a in a, in a, in a, a, a place of what you you always feel. That don't mean that you are just poor and ain't got no money. You you understand what I'm saying? It don't mean that you are depressed either. See, because I don't want y'all to get it all twisted in, in, in Mabel. It means that you are in a place where you you always feeling kind of not yourself. You, the Bible says you are you are blessed, and what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? For there is the kingdom. You want the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all else to be added unto. So you go, you won't mess around and go to heaven. You are blessed if you got this type of spirit. And it's gonna lead you to where? The kingdom of heaven. Who I, I want to go to heaven. I don't know about nobody else. That's that first attitude you gotta try to get in order. Next. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. <laughs> Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. God said in his word that he sent his son. And his son came and did a certain other thing for us, like give his life. And he said that he wasn't going to leave us alone. He was going to give us a comforter. Now, this comfort is truly the Holy Spirit. Now, it's a lot of times that we go through a whole lot of stuff and experience a whole lot of stuff that make us cry and make us mourn. So if we crying and mourning and going to God about, it's a difference from crying and mourning. When you cry, it's just a pain that you experience, P-A-I-N. But when you start mourning to God, it's a pain, P-A-N-G. That goes just a little bit deeper. Look it up. I'm telling you. Blessed, you see. God said that you are blessed if you mourn, for you're going to be confident. So guess what? It ain't going to last always. It ain't going to last always. He giving you a surety that you crying and mourning is going to be confident. Go to the next one. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the Look. earth. <laughs> God can't stand nobody prideful. He, he can't stand nobody prideful. He said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Listen to me. Listen to me. Look, I, I want y'all to really get this right here. The Bible says pride comes before destruction, and it comes before a great fall. Okay? Don't get so prideful when you get a better job or you get a better car or you get this or you get that or God done bless you with it and you walking around in pride. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything that the dwells therein. God say if you are meek and humble concerning this thing, you're going to inherit the earth. So guess what? You can have anything you want within this earth and guess who it belongs to? God. You blessed. If you meek and lowly, not walking in pride, he going to give you some stuff. From the, I'm talking about tangible stuff. He, are y'all listening to me? Read. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after <laughs> righteousness. I dare you. Shall be filled. I dare you to hunger and thirst after God. I dare you. He going to fill you up. I'm talking about with your whole heart, body, mind, and soul with all your might. I double dare you. I dare you. You're going to be filled. You're going to be hungry. Even when you is naturally hungry, you're going to be sustained. Listen. I dare you. The Bible say you blessed. All these scriptures start out with what? Blessed. Man cannot curse what God bless. Next. Blessed are the merciful, for they bless. shall obtain mercy. Bless. Who you don't have mercy on? Somebody who come up against you? Or somebody who do you wrong? Or you want to do them the same way that they do you? Or you want to act the same way that they act? You're not going to have mercy on them? You're not going to have mercy on them because you can't even see past what they're doing to you. 
Because a lot of people don't even recognize and realize that they in here. That's when I get the feeling sorry for fun. I be like, you know what, it ain't even a fun. It's that stuff they was taught or they learned or, or something that was fed because it's so easy to plant some seeds. It's so easy. The Bible say you are blessed if you give mercy to somebody else. Just have mercy on the thing. It don't matter what they say, how they say, when or how long they've been doing it. Show your mercy. Show your mercy because it, it really ain't even their fault. It really ain't even their fault because the Bible says we was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So we had this stuff even when we came out the womb. How about when we was conceived? We was born in it. It's shaped all around it. What's next? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall Bless. see God. So, who in here could actually say they got a pure heart? Don't please don't lift your hands up. Who in here could actually say that they got a pure heart? Can we say that we got a pure heart? You got a pure heart. You could pray for that person who 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 slammed at you or dogged you. You how about that person that stole all your chin every time? Can you purely pray for them? You look, she said, mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? You can we? And we just keeping it real, for real, for real. We talking about something because what people say, don't touch my money, don't touch my children, and you better not touch my man. <laughs> And that's for the men, the women, the, that's for the women, you know, the men say something different. I, I can tell you what the men say. What, what do the men say? Because I'm a woman. I'm a woman, baby. I can't tell you what a man say. What, what do a man say? Don't touch my money. Don't touch my truth. Or y'all don't say, what, what? You don't know? You don't. The, <laughs> girl, don't be acting funny about that food. I cooked it. How you going to do <laughs> So that's what a woman say. I can't tell you what a man say because I'm not a man and then they say they don't, I don't know. You know how men are. They just a man. They don't know no better. I'm sorry, I ain't mean no thing. So the Bible say you're blessed if you have a pure heart. Read. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be Blessed are the peacemakers. The Bible say we pose, they, what, what's going to happen? They shall be called the children of God. We, listen, <laughs> how many times you heard somebody say, I know God doing something in me because I ain't cracked them in their head. <laughs> <laughs> I know God working with me, baby, because I ain't gonna split you to the white me. <laughs> ain't it? <laughs> Look, man, you know you doing something, God, because I ain't running them over with my car. <laughs> You know you get this look, cause you be running around being open girls, don't you? I just had a girl running somebody up with their car. You don't want to listen to me when I sit up here and tell you we 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 know God be doing so. We say that in a minute. I know God doing something with me, cause baby. Look. And this is what I'm saying. You could get angry and sin not. You you understand what I'm saying? You know. <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> See, we we us we something else. But God said we are blessed if we do certain other things. What's the next? Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. Look, let me tell you something. I don't care if you is doing something wrong or if you're doing something right. People going to say something about you. If you're doing something right, they really going to be on top of your head. I keep, I keep thinking about Nehemiah. Every time Nehemiah went out to get ready to do something for the build up the kingdom of God, somebody always had something to say. Baby, they was even trying to recruit folk and telling lies and, and writing letters and doing all kinds a matter of evil against what somebody is doing. You could be doing something right, baby, and it seems like when you're doing something right, that's when somebody try to come up against you the most. Long as you're doing something bad, they all in cahoots with you. Why is it so easy for the gather up a whole lot of folk to be in cahoots with you? For real. Oh, 
So we always try to recruit people, maybe because they did it to Jesus. They brought up some accusers. And them accusers was lying on that man. You hear what I'm saying? They lied on him for to get him killed. He was going to die for us anyway, but they tried to put fuel on the fire. You, you understand what's going to make something stick? They always trying to recruit stuff. And then in the midst of it, the, the, the high priest, um, when they was like, well, who do you want us to, and, and y'all know the story when he was getting ready to get crucified and he was standing up against uh, against um, Caesar and Pilate, 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 whatever his name is. And so in the midst of it, they was like, well, who do you want us to um, 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 release to you? they rather have a thief, a liar, and a murderer instead of Jesus. Now, and they know his works because they didn't already seen his work. Now, in the midst of it, was not the high priest trying to recruit somebody else. So let me tell you, so when you're doing something and you're being persecuted for righteousness sake, it's always going to be somebody that's going to try to recruit somebody else for to make you look bad or make you seem like you're doing something bad or you ain't doing something right. It's always going to be somebody or something that's going to try to come up against you, especially if it's concerning the kingdom of God. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. And then how about the ones who really don't be doing nothing to nobody? And don't be saying anything. And just and it's always people always being on you. People always being on you, GT. Always got something to say. Always and you'll never say no, you just be crying. You just say, God said you blessed, girl. He said you blessed. He said everybody else be wanting to defend you. Because they get sick and tired of seeing folk picking up. That's how they. That that that's how they do me. See, I ain't got a whole. I got I got a lot of family down here on my mother's side and my father's side, but I don't. You know, I'm not a visitor and I'll be associated with them like that. But I got a lot of people up in Michigan too, and so because people always be picking on me and messing with me, and I feel like I'm just really by myself. I'm telling you, it's people always be trying to defend me. I be I be calling up there and I be telling I be telling the folk I'm like, you know what, sister, sister, sister. they're like, do I need to come down there? Do, because it's always a, look, you ain't ever got to defend yourself and even if you venting to somebody you really ain't venting to them for them to fight for you you just venting because you want to get it all out you really don't need nobody to be your defender because if she not read the bible says that vengeance is mine, I repay you ain't even got to worry about what nobody said or how they do it because there's a whole bunch of people who do stuff in secret and they think you don't know. It's a girl while I was in prayer this morning, just now, and I saw a mask and saw the face, and then I saw two faces, and it was split. And I saw the faces. So let me explain something to you. Can you still pray for that person? Can you still love that person? Can you still embrace that person out of a pure and fervent spirit and heart? Can these things be done to you and for you or against you and you still holding on to that person? Fighting for them, praying for them. Can it be done? Can it actually, actually be done? It be kind of hard. It be kind of hard for some of us. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because I'm telling you, God will let you know. He said he ain't going to let nothing come upon you unaware. Read. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and when they shoot you. Listen, folk gonna always talk about you. They always gonna say something. Like, it don't matter. Don't, don't you worry about nobody saying nothing else about you, dark and lovely. Don't, don't it don't matter what nobody said. Oh, is they reason why they did that? Or is this such and such such? Or she shouldn't be with him. Or she shouldn't be with her. Or she stop it. Get out of my business. Because God said that I'm blessed. I'm blessed because you said something bad about me. But why you think you cursing me, guess what? The Bible said I'm blessed. So why you think you talking about me and, and speaking all men are evil against me, guess what? The Bible said I'm blessed. Why you even thinking some type of way about me and trying to conjure up some stuff all up against me, God said I'm blessed. So, why you trying to put a stumbling block before me that I may fall? Guess what? I can jump over it. Because I'm blessed. And that's what God said. 
And then it's a lot of stuff that we holding on to even from our past. Somebody said a certain thing to us in our past. Somebody treated us a certain way in our past. Somebody, and then even in the midst of it, we still forgive them. We still love them. We still treat them some type of way. And, and what's I saying? I'm feeding them with a long handle spoon. I gotta watch what. You better watch what you say to them, girl, because you already know they go. You. Girl, you still bleed. You, I still see that gash in your back. And you, what you doing with them? And they said, we, those secret sayers. Those are those secret sayers. But even in the midst of it, God said you blessed. When people want to see you doing bad. They cursing you. Oh, they ain't gonna have that job long. Oh, they ain't gonna do this or that. And God steady blessing you. Ha! You're blessed. You're blessed. Oh, they they ain't gonna be living there long. They gonna get put out and said da, 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 da. And, and every time they see you, God adding on to you. You blessed. Why they trying to curse? The curses of people and the blessings of God. Well, God bless, can't nobody curse it. I wouldn't give a rest to what they say. And we just read all of them. From Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, all the way down to 12. He said that you are blessed. So it don't matter what nobody say or how they say it. You just have a pure heart. Stop trying to fight for yourself. Stop trying to defend yourself. If somebody acting some type of way towards you, I dare you to be nice to them. If your enemy come up against you and you know that they're your enemy and you know without a shadow of a doubt, tell, come on, you, you say you're hungry? You, and giving it to them for real, for real. Out of a pure heart. Loving on folk for real, for real. Putting ourselves to the side. We allow our emotions to cause us to act some type of way. When I was in consecration and fasting on this weekend, the Lord was talking about the emotions of the people. We emotionally come in here and praise and worship God when he said we're supposed to do it in the spirit and the truth. He didn't say he wanted any emotion. He said he wanted truth. And in your spirit. These are the things that he said to us. We are blessed. And when people try to curse us, just say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. No matter what they do or how they say, people try to give you opinions or, or try to tell you what you should or what you shouldn't do. Just always remember, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Ah, say it again. She always got her armor on. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It may not sound good. It may not look good. It may not be good. It may not even be acting good. Any of, and none of this stuff may not even be acting right. But just know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It ain't nothing they're going to come up against me that is going to cause me to be or feel some type of way. I know without a shadow of a doubt, we got to start talking to our own selves, encouraging our own selves. We got to start speaking some stuff into existence. If God be for me, who can be against me? So anybody and everybody in the world could be saying something for you, against you, for you, or trying to pull you down. If God be for you, who can be against you? You are, you got the victory. God is my avenger. I ain't got to worry about getting no revenge on nobody. I'm not going to talk about them and talk about them because they're talking about me. But I am going to speak the truth. I am going to speak the truth. It's one thing that I'm not is a liar. And I ain't scared. I'll tell anybody whatever. If it's the truth. I ain't trying to pull nobody down or make nobody feel no type of way. But the, what do the Bible say is about the truth? Get that scripture from me, Keto. Says the truth will cut you to the very marrow of your bone. It'll go all the Sunday in round up. It'll do all that. It'll do all that. And the Bible says that we have to walk in truth. Because guess what? A liar will not tarry in his sight. So you ain't got to lie just to make yourself look good or get yourself out of no trouble. Because the Bible says the truth will set you free. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. 
It ain't going to set you free. The Bible says. Yeah. That's why y'all got to study yourself. The Bible says the truth will make you free. See, some, some of us got to be made. I got to make you do this, and I got to make you do that. And I, some of us got to be made, boy. We got to, I got to make you act it. Like we chastising the kid. You can make them be quiet if they want to shit up. You can make them sit down if they want to run. You, we got, the Bible says the truth shall make you free. You got that scripture back there? Somebody find that scripture for me. You got it, baby? Find that scripture for me. We're talking about behaviors. And I told y'all four types of behaviors. That's what we're talking about. A lot of people hate to see other folk happy. I don't care what you go through or how you go through or how long you've been going through it. And then they, they see you and you smile. They be like, girl, what you smiling for? I'm just happy. You ain't. I'm just, <laughs> John. John 8 and 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, find that scripture for me that says that the truth will cut you asunder, under, around, all the way down to the very mirror. <clears throat> High loyalty. <laughs> Somebody got it for me. Y'all gonna make me go up and get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I know it by heart, I won't be telling y'all to help me. You know, God, that's a gift. God gave some people a gift, baby. I know this one um, prophet. He in Michigan, Lord rest his soul, he did today. When I tell you, you could say one scripture, he'd be like, that's John 3 and 2. That's a, that's a gift. That meant, did you hear what I was saying? That's a gift. I don't know, but I know it's in that book. I know it's in the book. I don't pretend. I don't pretend to know. Oh, that's, that's John 2 and 4. Now, I know a few, but I don't know a lot of them. I know the ones that they taught us. John 3, 16, for God's own other word. He got 23rd Psalms. The, the day, you know, at the basis. Matthew 6 and 9, that's the Lord's prayer. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, because we was taught up and we was raised on that stuff. You know, I know Romans 12 and 1 because that's the very first scripture I ever preached in my life. I know that. Romans 12 and 2. So, I, I, I don't pretend. Is it in Ephesians? Hebrews what? You had it and didn't say nothing private? Read it then, fuck He sit back there and threw his head back and cocked that leg. The Bible says it's quick and it's wait a minute. It says the word of God. And what's the word of God? Truth. And who is the word? God. The word of God is what is quick and it's powerful. Sharper than okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Did any two-edged sword? So just imagine. Something coming to you real quick and with power. When something hits you with power, girl, it'll knock the whole back out of that chair. And it's coming to you quick. You know how Muhammad Ali, you're quick and powerful, sting you like a bee. How you used to say? With a butterfly, sting you like. He was quick and powerful. They was all scared of that man. The Bible says the word. 
of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So it ain't just one sword coming to you. It's got two edges to it. And it's sharp. What else? Read. Piercing. Piercing. It piercing what? Dividing. It's not going to just pierce you because it's real sharp. It's powerful. It's quick. It's powerful. And it's real sharp. And it's got two edges. And it's going to pierce you. When you pierce something, that means you digging it into something. It's piercing in what? Even to the dividing. Not only is it going to pierce, it's going to split something in half. We talking about the truth. Ain't it? It's going to not just pierce you, girl. It's going to dig in you. Then it's going to split you in half. And then what it's going to do? A soul and spirit. All the way to your soul and spirit. And what? And the joints and mirrors. The joints and the mirrors is in between. Your joints, my fingers. It's bending. We're talking about in between there. The joints and the marrow. The marrow is a bone. You know how you bite the chicken bone and it open up and then the inside is that brown stuff? That's the marrow. And what else? And it's a discerner of the thorns. Listen, listen. Listen to me when I sit up. It's doing all that. First it's going to dig inside of you. It's going to split you in half. It's going to go in between, on the around and we're talking about the truth, which is the word of God. We're talking about something that's going to get all the way down to the nitty gritty. The cracks and the crevices. You can't get around it, you can't get under it. And your show can't go through it. We're talking about something that will make you free. And it's that word. And that word is truth. So it does not matter what nobody say or what nobody do to you. You just stand on what? Truth. You just stand on truth. It don't matter how they try to slander you or how the truth pull you down or make you look like you're doing something that's so bad. You just stand on what? Truth. You just do what God is telling you to do. How you just have that poor heart. Your attitude. I took y'all to the Beatitudes, Matthews 5, starting at 3 through 12. Your attitude when you approach a certain thing. If somebody comes to you and say something to you in an evil and a mad way, they approach you in a way and it makes your attitude trigger. It triggers your attitude and make you start acting some type of way. I dare you to put that attitude under control. And when they come to you and they approach you in a certain way and start acting a way, be like, baby, it's okay. Let's pray. Let's just... Let's, let, let's, let's get to a place of peace. Because the Bible said we're supposed to be at peace with our men. When somebody comes to, uh, up to you and, and, and start telling you something, where well, he said this and she said, it make you want to act some type of way towards that person. The person who coming to you saying something, say, well, why is you telling me that? Show them up. Why are you trying to cause division between me and that person? Why, why are you saying that? But you're supposed to be, because that ain't your friend, and neither are you. Right. Because you, we got to start making a stand concerning our attitudes and doing something. When folk get the line on you and saying different other stuff, be like, let's just pray for him. Let's just pray. Because God said the truth is going to make us free. It's okay, let him lie. It, it will never stand. It will never, ever stand. It's okay if folks just keep picking on Let them keep picking on you and let them keep saying stuff about you. Because God is your reward. He is your avenger. You ain't got to worry about nothing. The Bible says you be nice to him, girl, you he calls a fire on the head. You just keep being nice to him. Because we I'm done with them. Now, arms left. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No nope, legs left. Shoot. I ain't, I ain't even going to. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners. So if you hanging around and doing stuff with evil people, then guess what? That spirit can very well transfer itself unto you. Because there is a such thing as transferring the spirits. It is. It really is. This thing is real. 
So you act in a certain type of way, then you got, just say for instance, if I'm acting a certain type of way and I'm sitting here and then I get up and I go somewhere and then somebody else come and sit in my seat, that's very, very well jump on them and then they act in some type of way and you wonder why we bipolar. You, and, <laughs> you, I, I'm serious. Everybody, one minute, just, it seemed like a shifting, a take place just like that. And don't mess around and have no discernment. You can feel that stuff. Be like, well, what happened? We was just laughing. You're mad. You, you, for real. We get to trying to figure out what's really going on. What's, what, what's happening? What? I mean, and, and then don't let a person say one thing. Certain stuff that people say is not even really what it sounds like it is. They could be saying something in, in intentions for it to be something else, but you may think it's for one thing. So if I ask you a question, well, do you, you, you know you need me this or you need, but you think in a certain way, that ain't even the way that it even is. That ain't it. Because of what we think. The Lord had me praying today about our thoughts. We have idle thoughts, y'all. This is what he said. Our thoughts are so idle. And so we always be thinking one way when actuality is another way. And that's what makes us act out our attitudes. We shift. We be acting. We be doing the thing and don't even know we doing it half the time because we've been doing it for so cotton picking on. Forever. For Some things we just gotta let go, especially from our past. You cannot take nothing from your past into your future. How you used to treat people or how you used to act towards people and you say that you changed and you're a new person in God, you can't take that same attitude into this new life of yours. Because when you become a, a new creature in God, it's a new life. It's a new lifestyle. It's a new way to think. Be not transformed with your mind. Be, tra be Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And be be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you can't be conformed to what you used to do, how you used to act, how you think all women act, how you think all women think, how you think all men act, how you think all men, no. That's why I be so much division in relationships. You can't handle everybody the same way you used to handle them, especially if you're in the newness of God. You just can't. It's our attitudes. It's our attitudes. Sometimes you just got to shut it down and don't say a word. Just be like, okay. It's just okay. Stop saying it's just okay. And then you'll be more at peace. Because you won't be trying to wonder. You won't be trying to figure out. You won't be trying to, well, what is it? No. God said, if you keep your mind on him, you'll be in perfect peace. I dare you to keep your mind on him. Girl, I be praising and singing and praising songs and because I don't listen to nothing but gospel music, but that's me. Anybody can do whatever they want to do, how they do it. I ain't judge you. I ain't pointing my finger, wagging my head. That's between you and God. I'm just going to do me. We got to check our attitudes. We got, no matter what nobody do to us, no matter how they say it. And if a person do something to you or revile you or say, well, how many times you going to forgive them? The Bible says seven times, seven times. So that means you got to keep on forgiving them over and over again. The Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. What that means? So if it's covering a multitude of sins, so when I get mad at you again, I'm not going to bring up that thing that I said that I forgave you for because I didn't forget about it. I'm just going to leave it alone. Well, you used to, I ain't used to not. Okay, it's over with. I done. You said you forgave me. But you, you still pondering it in your heart because you ain't forgave me. You still want to talk about it. You still bringing it up. You still. Can we actually forgive and not bring something up no more? Can we actually just leave it alone? Sometimes we just got to let go of something because we always trying to figure it out. 
We always trying to figure out that thing. Okay, I want to get this right, and I want to do this, and I want to do it like this. And I, Sometimes we got to let go of some stuff. So let go of some stuff from our past that we want to take into our future. We holding on to some stuff, even some items, and, and even some memories. And we holding on to some stuff from our past that we taking into our future, and it's causing us to be in it. It ain't got to be with nobody else. It can be within our own selves. Because guess what? We be with our own selves. We be with our own selves. Sometimes we just got to just be okay and just walk away. But when we do that walking away, is we doing it for our own selves or we doing our smile? What is these motives for? Come on. What's the reason for a whole lot of stuff? Our attitudes. Our attitudes causes us to do this certain thing or act this certain kind of way. I mean, think about um, um, Saul and David. Think about it. The Bible says that Saul loved David just like he loved his own son, Jonathan. That's what the Bible said. Not only did the Bible say that he loved David and he looked up to David, David even used to play music for the man. He sent David out for to go to war, and when David came back, they got to singing and praising David that he would kill more men than Saul did. Now, the very person that said that they love me like they love their own son, hate me, now you want to kill me. Now, why you hate me now? Because you're jealous of what they said. Can we all just get along? If, if, if you put down 10 and I put down 20, how about we get together? Guess what? I mean, we can put down 10. Why it always got to be a competition thing? It's the attitude. It's the attitude. They got something that you want. Now, I told y'all about the haters, right? You, you see what I'm saying? This is all the stuff that he's giving me, and I'm giving it to you guys, so that you can live a peaceable and better life, even within your own selves. Even within your own selves. It's okay. Let people just be people. You just try to be a better you. You got to let some stuff go. A person say something to you and it just made you feel so bad. It cut you so bad, baby. It just hurt you so bad. I'm telling you, been there, done that. And so you just don't want to forget about it. And then when you see that person again, you be like, oh, Lord. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? And because it hurt so bad and it's a constant pain and it's a constant digging. And so it causes us to be bound and wrapped up and entangled in that very thing that is never going to change. So if it's never going to change, how how about you change your attitude towards it? If we change our attitudes towards it and just let some stuff go, then it'll be better for us. Because when we hold on to all this stuff and we try to figure out all this stuff, it ain't no good for us. Sometimes we just gotta let some things go. We worry too much. We try to figure out too much. It's praying time. We just gotta let God do some stuff. 